Well, we've had a little bit of a COVID interruption. But now we are completely expecting divine recovery. Oh, yeah. We are. It's so time for everything wrong, Deanne, to be made right. I choose to believe some stuff today. Yeah. I choose to believe that we can create a place where the love of God, where the goodness of God becomes the dominant reality in the earth. Yeah. And I was gonna I was gonna take that back and not say something as big as the earth, but you know what? The earth. Yeah, we need to believe for the earth. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof and all these nations need to experience the love of God the goodness of God we need to believe that we can create a place whether we're riding a bicycle we're going to a job whatever it is where the goodness of God the love of God would be the dominant reality in that place that's right so we choose to create an atmosphere of the goodness of God and that we walk that out and that becomes our reality. So really, it's just the perfect time to be a blessing. It oh, is the oh. perfect time to be the goodness of God. Of God. And so right now we're in that we're in that season. We're, it's always that season, but it is definitely in that season. And when you're in that season, then the suddenlies begin to happen that are are really mind blowing. So here's the fullness of God that I was reading. Deanne reads all of these things. I go to the Old Testament and the the goodness of God that, that became my reality was this out of Isaiah uh, 55. Yeah. And I'll just cut to the chase. Here's what it says. God says, my words are forbidden to return to me without fulfilling the things they were sent to do. God is all about doing the things that he has given voice to. He's all about that. He says, my words are forbidden to come back to me. They cannot return back to me void and empty. So here's what God is doing. He is using you and I to be his voice in the earth. Now he's sovereign and he can speak and he can do whenever, however he wants to do. So I never want yeah. to say that I, I don't believe that, I believe that. But he has also sovereignly chosen to use you and I. So we have 1 Corinthians 2 and, 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 and Paul is, says something. But before he says something, I just revisited Acts chapter 9. And here, so we have Paul. He's highly educated. Yeah. He's highly uh, at a high place in religion. He's very religious, but it, it did not include Almighty God and Jesus. And this was his belief system. And because of his belief system... It, it included doing away with all those that didn't have his world view. And here's what Paul did. He put his belief to action. And it says there in Acts chapter 9 that he went to the high priest to get letters that would authorize him to go to Jerusalem or, or go out into the area and arrest the disciples of Christ and take them back to Jerusalem. Now listen, I love this part right here. I love this part. As Paul journeyed. Yeah. Listen, yeah. there's a whole lot of people oh, that are yeah. Journey, yeah. journeying in this earth. That, that's fine. As Paul, I'm talking about Paul. I'm talking about the ones who his belief system caused him to go out and arrest people like <laughs> you and 
died to watch them even be put to death as Paul journeyed. Hey, suddenly, this is what I'm talking about. There are suddenlies that are happening right now. As Paul journeyed, as these people walk by us, as they are journeying, as these um, religious ideologies that want us out of the way, they are journeying, and suddenly there was a light that shined on this man, knocked him off of his horse, and he heard a voice Woo! that he had never heard before. Yeah. Yeah. And that voice was Jesus. And Jesus said, why are you persecuting me? Oh. He did not even have that kind of belief system to even know that it was Jesus, that he was persecuting Jesus. He didn't know that. And the Lord said to him, you go if, and, and he said, well, what do you want me to do? Yeah. Yeah. What do, you, what, do you, what do you want me to do? So good. This would be like those Taliban people. Yeah. 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 What, what, what do you want me to do? And, and the Lord said, go, go into that city and it'll be told to you what to do. And so that, that, that story is profound in light of where we are right now with a world view and a belief system that excludes the Almighty God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit. So now back to 1 Corinthians 2. Here's what it says. Here, now here's Paul. Now he's been away for several years getting a new world view and a new understanding of what is going on. And he comes back in and announces to this Corinthian church, a new church. He said, you know, while my speech and my preaching, listen, he is an educated man in religion and just in the world. He's highly educated. He said, you know what, my speech and my preaching are not with enticing words of man's wisdom but in the demonstration of the spirit and power. Lift your hands in this room. I say that your speech is not with enticing words of men's wisdom, but in the spirit and power and demonstration of God. That, and here's what he goes on to say, that your faith, would not stand in the wisdom of man, but in the power of God. So he goes on to say, we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom that God ordained before the foundations of the earth. As it is written, I hadn't seen, ear hadn't heard, neither has entered the heart of man, the things that God has already, say already, already, already prepared for them that love him. But God has revealed them to us by his spirit. Why? So that we might know the things that are freely given to us. This is what we're learning, but not just learning it. Yes, yes. Because Paul was a learned man. Lost. That we would experience it. Say this, I'm going to know what's already been prepared. Say it. I'm going to know what's already prepared. I'm going to see what's already been prepared. I'm going to see what's already been prepared. I'm going to have what's already been prepared. I'm going to have it. Now, we're in a unique season in, in the earth. The things that we are hearing, the things that we are seeing in, in the natural it causes our belief system to be redone because what we are seeing and hearing is, is like unbelievable. So what I am learning to do is that I'm going to see what I have not seen. I can see that stuff in the natural, in my, in my own natural life or my own natural family, 
or things go in, and, and then you, you look at the, so I'm, I'm gonna look at things that I, that I can't see. Not to ignore that, I, I don't mean that <coughs> at all. Sandy. But there's just some stuff, go ahead. I wanna bring a little correction to myself. <clears throat> I said that the, <clears throat> that the scriptures were written to the new creation, to the new man to the Kanos man. But do you know that Paul only had the Old Testament? Do you know that everything, that how many years was he off? 14? 13, yeah. 13 or 14 yeah. years? For 13 or 14 years, the New Testament wasn't even written. He wrote the New Testament. Some of it, yeah. A lot of it. There is no excuse for the body of Christ to not be taught of the Holy Spirit. If it can take Paul, who was bound up in religion, a religion of violence, a religion of you do this, you get this, a religion of karmic law. You sow, you reap. You do bad, you repent, you take an offering, ha, you're okay for another year. Now, he comes out of that and comes to the entire message of grace through the Lord Jesus Christ, Sandy, and he didn't have the scriptures. He only had the Old Testament. I'm telling you, the Holy Spirit is at work in this day and age to teach even the most rebellious, the most hey. wicked, the most cruel, the most bound up, religious antichrist spirit god is at work building his church so god has invested in us the opportunity to speak into existence the things that he has prepared in that other realm to be manifested in this earth realm yeah Say this, the goodness of God is my reality. The goodness of God is my reality. I demonstrate the power of God. I demonstrate the power of God. I am healthy. I am healthy. I am happy. I am happy. I am complete. I am complete. I am whole. I am whole. Now let me say this. Everything went wrong. You know, sometimes my mind is interesting and I go various different places. Everything went wrong in 1970 with the Apollo 13 mission. This was when we were going to the moon. And I think this was like the third trip. So it's Apollo 13 in 1970. And something, something goes wrong. Tell your neighbor, I know what she's talking about right there. Some, some, something goes wrong. And this is an, an, an amazing opportunity for them. And something goes wrong. The commander, the overall commander, uh, overheard the flight director saying all the reasons that this, that we're not going to be able to bring them home. There were three of them. So the commander overhears the flight director, and these are brilliant men. Yes, yeah. So he overhears the flight director saying all of the reasons. Let's just, let's just get it over with. We can't bring them, we can't bring them back. Some, something has gone wrong, we can't bring them back down. And the commander, I, I love this turned to him and said, with all due respect, yes, shut up. I believe this is our finest hour. That, that's what Brian Simmons was saying. I, I, know that, I know things don't look right. I know all of that stuff. But he said, this is our finest hour. And then another little clip, when they're trying to figure out what they're going to do, and here's, I, I loved it. Because all of the men were in there. 
all of the mathematicians, all of the scientists, and they're, they're, all, they're trying to get these three men, I think it was three, these three men back. Because oh. they got, got, got up there and something happened and, they, and they, had, they needed to get them home. And so they're all in there, and they're all doing, and the commander says, you go do this, and you go do that. I, I tell you, it was representative to me of how the body of Christ ought to be working together to, so we can demonstrate the kingdom of God. And then, finally, the commander goes. This isn't going to happen on my watch. Failure is not an option. I loved it. The whole body of Christ was working. And the, com the commander of it all, hello, said failure is not an option. <laughs>